Yes, Paul McCarthy is still making music. <laughs> this guy been in the game since disco. <laughs> Shoot, probably before. Now, I actually never heard a Paul McCarthy album. Never really listened to him until four or five seconds, and I only listened to that because, I mean, it had Kanye and the beautiful, beautiful Rihanna. Hey, Riri. I know, I know, I, I know. I should be ashamed. But one thing I do know is Paul is a legend and he will be remembered forever in the music industry. So let's begin. Now, if you're new to my channel, I do music reviews that not only break down the artist, but also break down each song on the album. And then I give my review. So if you're a music fan, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also like this video. And if you want me to review a album of yours, definitely DM me on Instagram. All right, let's get into the video. So who is Paul McCartney? Sir James Paul McCartney is a 78 year old legend, singer, songwriter, musician, and record and film producer who gained fame as a co-lead vocalist and bassist for the Beatles. Wait, I, I actually didn't know he was a part of the Beatles. <laughs> Wow, I've been asleep. Now, the songwriting partnership that he had with John Lennon was the most successful partnership in history. I mean, according to Google, the guy is worth over $800 million. But after the Beatles disbanded, he pursued a solo career and started performing with his own band titled The, the Wings. And that included his first wife, Linda, as well as Denny Leanne. Now, he is a self-taught musician. He can play multiple instruments, including the bass, guitar, keyboards, and drums. He's also known for his melodic approach to playing, specifically in the bass, so I'd definitely be looking out for that. He's also known for his versatile and wide tenor range, being able to sing over four different octaves. But he explored multiple styles of genres, including pre-rock and roll pop, all the way to classical and electronica. Now it's cool because he actually debuted his solo album as McCartney, and now we're here in 2020, literally over what? 50 years later, 50 years later, Wolf McCartney 3. But as you can imagine, he had major success. He's one of the most successful composers and performers of all time. And his band, The Wings, was one of the most successful bands in the 1970s, with more than 12 top 10 singles and albums. He toured consistently as a solo artist and written or co-written 32 songs that appeared as number one on the Billboard Top 100 charts. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, once with the Beatles and another one as a solo artist. Has 18 Grammys and one of the wealthiest musicians in the world. I mean, 800 million is nothing to play with. <laughs> but you lucky this is just a summary. I, mean, I can just go on and on about Paul, but I can't, I'm not, I'm not. So let's go ahead and get into the album. But before I do, go ahead and subscribe and leave a like on this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually get into the actual album. This video is sponsored by uh, the iPhone 12. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just playing, I'm, I'm not. I'm not really sponsored by Apple. I'm, I'm not there yet. Uh, one day though. <laughs> okay, first up we have Lone Tail Winter Bird. It's just gonna be a guitar solo? I mean, it's sounding good though. It's, it's sounding really good. Oh, that bass coming in, okay. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm just hearing a lot of good, good sounds. I mean, from the voice that's already heard, it's kind of like a nice effect going on there, and there's a nice guitar strum going on throughout this track as well. So I'm enjoying it so far. I have no idea what to expect with this song, but it's sounding good. Ooh. Solid track. One thing I love about this track is a lot of space in it. It's, 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 it's kind of like just an instrumental. I never listened to Paul McCarthy music before, so I'm not sure if this is something that he previously did. Please let me know in the comment section because I want to know. But it's amazing. There's a lot of instrumentation. And it allows you to feel the music, and there's a simple hook going on to kind of give it words in the track. I love it. I love it. I'm enjoying the first listen. I'm enjoying the first track so far, so I'm excited to hear the next one. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels like a happy, feel good song. I actually dig it, I actually dig it. I wouldn't normally listen to this, but it sounds very great. I love the live instrumentation, I love the drums, I love the guitar continuation. I do love how he started to use his tenor tones, and he also went up a 
whole another octave singing that higher pitch <laughs> during the hook. Amazing, pretty good. There's a lot of good, good, good guitar solos being used here. I'm enjoying it. It's a different style, but I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. This song makes you feel like you're in a concert. You got your light up, and then you just like, you know what I'm saying, going side to side. <laughs> Interesting song, so I'm actually reading on Spotify. So the lyrics for Pretty Boys are inspired by Paul seeing bicycles for hire around New York and London. Uh, and it was also inspired by certain photographers who have been known to get out of line in the studio. Now the objects of desire in the song are male models, but Paul finished the song with a warning. He said, you can look for you better not touch. Hey, it is what it is. Not a bad track. I do think that the vocals were not as strong when it comes to uh, a harmonic standpoint, but again, I'm not expecting it to be the best thing in the world. I'm loving the piano here, and there's also a like, I forgot what you call it, uh, like a scuff uh, snare being played here with the drums. It's pretty nice. It gives it like a nice calm feel. So fun fact, this song was actually written after he read the biography of Lee Bailey. And he's singing that more bluesy baritone tone, which echoes Lee Berry's uh, delivery. And there's also Bill Black's double bass on the track as well. If you don't know Black, Black was known or best known for being Elvis Presley's bass player. But the lyrics remind us what we do with our lives matter to others. Not a bad track. Uh, it's definitely limited in instrumentation. It's driven by the piano. The bass is following the piano. And the drums are kind of simplistic. It's just playing a little jazz uh, snare there. Ooh, that guitar solo. Guy is 78 years old and he's still making some pretty good music. Goodness gracious. Bass is lovely, is, is going with the guitar here. I love the chant sound that's going on in the track. Cashy, I dig it. Wow. I have no idea what the sounds are on this track. Definitely a lot of sound editing here. And it's crazy how it's feeding from that basic doom. Doom. Like the basic rhythm in the drums, but then it adds so many different like spacious sonic sounds to give it like a fuller effect and obviously it's continuing on with the chants as well in the background. This just sounds lovely like Could you just imagine just driving your car and like you know, you're not going nowhere. You just driving you know <laughs> i like it i like it it's smooth it's cool kind of feels like you're i mean the title says it's a deep deep feeling but it feels like you're just going through a journey Ooh. that is getting sampled you heard it here first <laughs> oh that's a nice groove dun, 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 dun. that might get sampled too i ain't gonna lie to you <laughs> Love has guitar driven along with the bass going alongside with the drums. It sounds big, not too much, but it's a nice, a nice rock feel going on with it. I play with this one, you just gotta. Woo! Hey, freeze now, freeze now. All right, so this song is probably my favorite track so far. I love the heavy drum sound that, that opens the track. I had to look into it so. Basically, to get that drum style, he had to pretty much record the times at the double speed. And then when played back at the normal speed, uh, the drums were then like an octave lower and the effect creates that deeper tone. Pretty creative, pretty creative. The song talks about how you should hang on to the good times and seize the day, I love it. I love songs that have a positive message like this, I mean, Taking advantage of every single day, enjoying every single moment. I love it. It's a nice philosophical song. Does its job. Well written. Cashy. I love the way it's performed. I love the way the vocal is delivered on this track. And it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. First off, that freaking snare on the drum sound amazing. I'm hearing some organ. I'm hearing some e-piano in there. It's sounding pretty nice. Hey. Alright, alright. So overall, I thought the album was okay. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good for my first uh, Paul 
McCartney album, I thought it wasn't that bad. This made me actually respect him from a producer standpoint, but also from a lyrical standpoint. The guy can really write a, a good quality song. He can also put together the instrumentation that pretty much makes the song sound, sound very full. It, these songs are more of an experience rather than just a song, and I dig it, I, I, I enjoy that. Slotty is definitely my favorite track, but Deep Deep Feeling, Deep Deep Feeling just has some amazing instrumentation. I think one thing that stood out to me the most about this album is the instrumentation. I think that it really is unique and it found a great creative way of ultimately using live instrumentation but in just different ways. There's not a lot of different instrumentation going on here but the thing about this album and the thing about these songs is sometimes simplicity is key. He flawlessly did that. I respect it. I respect it 100%. Would I be listening to more Paul McCartney? Yeah, I will. I will. It's not my normal cup of tea, but I respect him. I respect his prowess. I respect his music. And this album helps me understand why he is who he is and why he has so much success in his career. If I had to give a rating for this project, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Let me know how y'all feel about the project. My first time listening to Paul McCartney, pretty cool. I may have to check out some more of his music. Let me know what to listen to. Now I'm reviewing the new EP titled Tulips from the artist Xavier Clark. So who is Xavier Clark? Xavier is a rap and hip hop artist from Indianapolis who brings passion and energy to every track created. Influenced from people like Travis Scott, Wheezy, and Brent Fias, and inspired by night drives, warm weather in the West Coast, experiences, moments, and uh, toxic women. I mean, I feel that. But he's able to express himself, be creative, and bring his own ambient and refreshing sound. Now his EP Tulip has four different tracks. Switch Up, Relations, No One Else, and Code. And it was fully produced by Hype Alexander, which pairs a lot of sonic sounds with a whole bunch of hip hop rap drums. And vulnerable lyrics that I think that you all will enjoy. There's things about heart bracing, the emotions that he experienced during that time. You can also hear a lot of influences in the production that gives you a lot of Travis Scott, Bryson Tiller vibes, and Solange vibes. Bryson with his trap drum style, Travis with the vocal delivery, and Solange and Cuddy with the more spacious, abstract, and various styles to allow it to incorporate a lot of different genres. Now, my favorite track on the project is Relations. <laughs> But my favorite production on the EP is definitely no one else because of the different variations that's brought on this track. Now, Relations itself is flawlessly delivered with a driving synth bass and beautiful drum pattern that gives it that killer bounce. I mean, it honestly kept me shaking my head. The flow on this track is very catchy and also melodic and the ad-libs give it some flavor, giving it just enough adding in harmonics and differentiations with his vocal performance. Well written and though it's short, it definitely grabs your attention and makes you want to keep listening to it or listen to his music more. Grab my attention, I love it, and it's added to my playlist. But overall, hey, a solid project. Well performed, well produced, and I love how there was a incorporation of some of my favorite artists, but you also still continue to find a unique way to add your own style to it. I rate this project a strong eight out of 10. I truly enjoyed it, it's a short listen, but you should listen to it too. You can find Tulips by Xavier Clark on all music platforms. Follow him on social media and click the link in his bio to check out the full on project. Let me know what y'all think. Mr. Steve, y'all.